If you somehow managed to find this video here, congratulations. This video here today will be one of the most life-changing guides you'll ever watch on YouTube because I'm going to be teaching you step-by-step -step to using these little plastic things right here called credit cards. I'm going to be giving you the full practical guide as how you can go from a complete beginner, a newbie, to an expert in getting life-changing benefits from credit cards all for free. So most of us have been taught that you shouldn't open too many credit cards or that credit cards can be pretty bad for you. Growing up, my parents even told me that at a young age that using credit cards will lead to more debt. But uh, in my life, I now have well over 15 credit cards. This is just one of my credit card binders done the runner up. I'll just go through it right here. A lot of different ones, a lot of different ones, a whole bunch of them. So when used responsibly, credit cards can be a great tool to not only build your credit up, but to have access to your dream car or the house you've wanted to live in. But it also offers rewards in the form of straight cash back points and even more. So ladies and gents, I own a few cars. I've loved cars since I was a little kid. I have an Audi RS7, I have a Huracan Evo, and actually, believe it or not, the favorite out of those two is my Toyota Tacoma 2019 TRD Sport. Now, while some people argue that it's never smart to finance a vehicle, personally for me, if I had bought my cars outright in cash, I wouldn't have been able to invest in other profitable ventures like a restaurant I co-own in Rockville, Maryland that pays me out every single month. On top of that, having free cash flow just allows me to reinvest back into my business, up the quality on this YouTube channel, grow up my team, or even be able to buy up the dips and being able to invest into the crypto markets. Now, the reason why I bring up just a few of the assets that I own is not to flex or to show off, but it's to show you that through responsible credit card usage early on, I was able to build my credit and get approved for financing on all of those vehicles. If I had a credit score that had very little history, or I just had a poor credit score from not understanding how the system works, like a lot of Americans do, I would not be in the situation that I am in today. What about houses? What about living in an apartment? Well, I've lived in two apartments so far ever since I moved out of my parents' house and they've always asked what my credit score was. They've always asked me for proof of finances and they've always wanted just a letter of recommendation from the bank. It might have to do with something that I run a YouTube channel. My job is a little out of the ordinary. Credit is so important and you need this if you want to change your residence, if you want to move into that dream apartment, if you want to ever buy that home, get a mortgage, you need need to understand exactly how this all works. Just recently, I was also approved for a quarter million dollar line of credit from JP Morgan Chase. This had happened because I was able to maintain good credit. I have a good relationship with my bankers and throughout the years of learning my strategies, implementing them, understanding them, not only have I been able to utilize free money on the table, but I'm literally getting offered free money now for me to use on anything business related. The point here that I want to make is that credit is one of the most important topics that ever everyone should know about, but it seems like most people walk around without paying much attention to it. Now, if you're somehow not excited or pumped up for this video just yet, you may want to buckle in because what we discussed, even in the short few minutes, was really just a little bit of what's to come. First, this is gonna be insurance and protection for your personal finances during troubling times. At the time of filming this video, we are indeed in that recession and whether you accept it or not, some of you may need help. And with proper credit card usage, you're gonna be able to have that insurance on your personal finances so you don't have to worry about the worst possible outcome that can happen to you or your family. You might get laid off. You may not have money to pay the bills, but by understanding how to properly tap into lines of credit, you could have access to tens of thousands thousands of dollars interest-free to get you by the next 12 to even 24 months. Now in a recession, not all things are bad though. Some of you may even see some crazy good deals on assets that you've been tracking for a very long time. Although credit cards can offer you insurance and protection, it can also give you the firepower needed in order to take advantage of any opportunities that might come up. Right now, the used car market is coming down. Luxury brand watches are down in price. The sneaker market has been in a correction. And on the top of the food chain, there will be homes that either foreclose or are just unable to sell. So you can buy these assets at a discount if you have the cash ready. But say you're on the other end of that spectrum and say the recession doesn't really affect you at all. You may literally be like the Joneses. You have a stable job, you know your income, you know your expenses for every month, and you live a life of routine. Regardless of if the market goes up or it goes down, you may not see the deals and you may not care to have a real estate empire or any type of material 
materialistic possession because you just see it as more debt. I respect that, it's okay, but let me tell you, even for people just like you, credit is so important. Outside of being able to borrow money from lenders, you can still access premium perks and enjoy rewards that credit cards offer. This includes traveling at that dream destination or not getting cramped in those economy seats, being able to travel first class without having to pay a dime extra out of your pocket. For me, I wanted to send my parents to Korea. I know with my credit card points, with my businesses, I am able to do that now. And this opens up doors of opportunities that you may never have imagined possible. Imagine for every dollar you spend, you're getting about a 5% discount back. Sometimes this is more, sometimes it could be less, but who doesn't love getting a discount on purchases or even just free money for spending like you usually would? Or how about this? Imagine being at an airport and your flight gets delayed overnight. And on top of that, these airlines may lose your suitcase. By just buying your plane tickets on a travel credit card, like the American Express Platinum card, you would be able to get your trip delay protection where this perk will reimburse your expenses such as meals, lodging, and other personal use items. This means one inconvenience could be your lucky day where now you eat a free meal, you could stay at a nice hotel nearby, or you just pick yourself up a new outfit because it's a little chilly, you're not prepared for a delay, you're able to get these things on the tab of the credit card company. There was a time during the pandemic I had lost just one of my AirPods and through the credit card's 60-day purchase protection with the American Express Platinum card, I was able to get a brand new pair right away. So at this point, I'm sure there's some people watching thinking, wow, this random Asian guy that I just found on YouTube who has some pretty odd similarities to that one Marvel character, Shang-Chi, is now probably gonna sell me something and there's a catch to all of this. Knowledge. For those thinking that, unfortunately, here's the truth. I got nothing to sell. There's no thousand dollar credit program or course I have for you to buy. I just wanna educate you guys and the only thing that I ask for you to do is to just like this video and if you find any value at some point, share it with someone you know. Now, ladies and gents, before we get started, we need to cover the basics, and that is what is a credit card and how does this all work? So whenever you go shopping, there's usually two ways that you might pay with a card or with cash. I know we have Apple Pay nowadays and you can put the card on your phone. So technically it's like three ways, but just stick with me. It's usually you're using a card or a cash. When choosing the option of a card, you're going to have a debit card that allows you to spend money directly from the funds that you have deposited at the bank, while a credit card allows you to borrow money from the credit card company up to a certain limit. And then you pay the amount back at the end of the month. On the front front end, the merchant at the gas station that you're buying from won't notice a difference, but on the back, this is where all the changes are happening. If you're a bit of a visual learner, think about it like this. There's a triangle that includes you, the credit card company, and the business you're buying from, and everyone's winning. The credit card companies make money every time you swipe because of those interchange fees. The business you're buying from gets your money in exchange for goods and services, and you actually win too from the slew of benefits of credit card companies where they offer you an extension of the money that they make from the deal in the form of reward benefits. So now that we understand the basics of how a credit card works, I believe discussing the do's and the don'ts are probably the most important step that you need to know. This here is crucial because as amazing as credit cards can be, it is true, they can also be very, very dangerous. And I've seen the impact personally myself that credit cards can also have in being a tool that can make someone's life miserable and even worse off than they first began. When my mom told me, don't get into credit cards because you will have debt, she was only only half wrong about that. So let's explain some of the mistakes that you should never ever make. So this part of the video, think of this as the commandments of credit cards that you need to follow. Otherwise, none of this is gonna work. First, always pay your balance off in full. Just because you now have a credit limit of over $10,000 for a single month, this does not mean you're allowed to spend all of that all in one place if you cannot afford to pay off the full balance in full at the end of that month. Always spend within your means and stay organized with your accounts. When you get to the late stages of the credit card game, you have two big binders that you carry around with you, you need to know your monthly income, you need to get an idea of your expenses, and you never want to get caught on the back of your foot where you have to carry a balance over the next month. Do your best to never miss a payment. Now, although this right here in missing a payment isn't as bad as just carrying a balance over and paying interest on that amount, because I've missed some payments before. When you get a lot of credit cards, you may forget that the payment is due. You may not 
set up the automatic payments on time. But in missing a payment, you can find yourself getting charged a late fee anywhere from $20 to $100. And over time, it can affect your credit score. What I always recommend for anyone opening a new credit card is this. Set a calendar notification within your phone from four to six weeks from now to set up automatic payments on that account so you don't have to manually pay your cards. The biggest lesson to note here is that you want to treat your cards as if they are debit cards. And as long as you're spending within your means and only the money you have sitting in your checking account, you should never be missing that payment. Another common mistake that I've seen a lot of people do is canceling a credit card. You may watch a video like this and you realize, okay, I got some crappy cards that Brian has never recommended and I'm not going to mention them, but y'all know the companies, the ones with terrible, terrible customer service, the ones that really seem to be out for you. And you may think, all right, I'm going to start this right. I'm going to cancel those credit cards and I'm going to go for a brand new one that Brian is recommending. Please, please, please do not do this. Do not cancel your credit card because this will affect your credit score. Instead, do this. If it has no annual fee, just keep the account open, turn on automatic payments. You can literally cut the physical card up with the scissors so you don't actually ever use it and it won't cost you a single penny to keep that account open and it will still allow you to continue building your credit history. Now, if you happen to have a credit card with an annual fee with a company that you don't like, meaning you're paying every single year just to hold that card, what you can do instead of canceling is to call them and to downgrade the card to a no annual fee card or even product change it to another card or if you call them and let them know, hey, I want to cancel it, they'll give you something called a retention offer where they'll say, you know what, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, we're sorry about that card. You know, we know it's a little expensive to hold. How about this? We'll give you a hundred or two hundred dollars right now for free, just so you hold the card for another year. That retention offer is something that pops up automatically on the customer rep screen. So you can find yourself through that either getting just another free year of holding that card, or you could be profiting just from that one phone call as well. Now, although these commandments are something that you always want to make sure you're following to the T. There are always going to be certain exceptions and methods where you can get around certain things. As an example, if you're carrying a balance, but you happen to have it on a business credit card that doesn't report to your personal credit report, and it also comes with a 0% APR offer for 24 months. In that instance, I would say, you know, it is okay to carry a balance over as long as you know that you will be paying it off and it will have no detrimental effect on you in the long run. The point I'm trying to make here is that there's always going to be certain unique situations and one rule does not apply to every single person out in the world. Please make sure that you at least follow the cardinal rules so you're better protected, but just know that there is always exceptions as well. All right, so at this stage in the video, I'm going to say this is probably the most important that you should be paying attention to. I'm going to be doing this a little different, a little Professor Jung style. I'm going to have a PowerPoint presentation that I made, and we're just going to be talking about exactly what you should do in order to go from A to Z in becoming a credit card advanced level user. All right, so to get started, it's as easy as just getting one credit card, using it, paying it off in full, and then getting a good positive credit report, using that and then reapplying for other cards. Some of the questions that may come up is, well, Brian, what card should I be applying for? In what order should I do it? How long should I wait? What should I do when I actually get the card? So a lot of these things we're gonna cover right now. Basically, step one is this. If you happen to have really bad credit where you can't get approved for any of the beginner cards or say you're a college student, you just turned 18 and you can't get approved for you know the Chase Freedom card, a city double cash card, some of the beginner cards that normally a lot of people can get approved for, your number one first thing to do is to apply for a secured credit card. Because this is meant for people who have bad credit or people who have no credit at all, in order to use this card, what actually has to happen is that you put a security deposit down, you give it to the bank, you give it to the card issuer, and say you give them 50 bucks, 100 bucks, or 200 bucks. That security deposit is gonna be your credit line. This means that if you somehow default on just a small amount, say you give them 200 bucks and you're unable to pay it off, the bank will have that $200 as collateral. So that right there establishes it. That allows them to form that trust in the beginning. And once you're able to show that, hey, I give you $200, I pay it off and I'm doing responsible credit card usage, then they will go ahead and either approve you for a full unsecured credit card, which is regular credit cards, or what they could then do is to just expand your initial credit limit. So secure cards are great for anyone who's just getting started out or you just don't have any credit cards, but say you move away from step number one, what you do next is step number two. This is to start applying for beginner starter cards. Before I was able to get a whole bunch of my credit cards, 
cards. I started just from where you guys were. Uh, I started with one credit card. I had a beginner credit card. Fortunately enough for me, I didn't have to use a secure credit card. I went ahead and at that time applied for a Chase Freedom Card. Before that, I did use Discover. That was a great card because I was still attending community college at that time. If you had good grades, one of their Discover It student cards would give you a little bit of cash for every quarter that you earned good grades too. So that is actually what helped build up my credit in the beginning. But I'll give you guys a little hack right here, a little gem. This is what some other people will charge thousands and thousands of dollars for. And this is a hack on getting huge credit limit increases within three to four weeks. So the way you can unlock this benefit is by doing something called piggybacking. So by piggybacking, it's exactly what it sounds like. Imagine you have a kid or an elderly person. I don't know, whatever it is. You have someone climbing your back, you're piggybacking them, you're carrying them around, you're walking for them. When it comes to credit cards, if you piggyback on someone, what they're doing is if your mom or your sister or your brother, they have a really high credit score. They have 780, 800, maybe they have an 850 perfect credit score. What they can do is add you as an authorized user on their account. They don't have to ever give you the credit card. They can just add you as an authorized account, cut up the credit card that ends up shipping to them. They don't have to ship it to your mailing address. Just make sure that your social security number is on it. They add you as a user of that card and all the experience that they get will transfer onto your account. So this works for certain cards. If they've been holding a American Express gold card for the last eight to nine years, they've never missed a payment. All that history will transfer onto you. So you're pretty much piggybacking on the success of their credit score and that will transfer over to you. So if you're trying to improve Improve your credit score really quick. That is just one easy way you can do it. The next credit cycle, the next one that refreshes, you should be able to see a huge jump on your credit score, and this will help you then get approved for these other credit cards. Now, as you see on your screen, we have beginner credit cards. There's a lot of great beginner ones. Chase, I would say, has some of the best offerings at the moment. Now, Chase is a little picky in the beginning. If you have no relationship with them, there is a way to get around this. On this next slide here, I mentioned it. It. Chase doesn't like new applicants, but one of the benefits of using Chase is that their points are really flexible. This means it's easy to use. You can book a hotel, you can book a flight, use those Chase Ultimate Reward Points at pretty much just very easy convenience. Chase is also on the Visa network, so it's accepted about 90% of the time. Now, if you were to get an alternative card to the Chase Freedom lineup, what you would have as an option is the American Express Blue Cash Everyday card. This here is the one with no annual fee. Right now, at the time of filming this video, they have 0% intro APR on about 15 months. You earn $200 back after you spend $2,000 within first six months, and you'll also receive the $200 back in the form of a statement credit. This here is just your traditional easy beginner card. They'll always incentivize with some type of cash offer or a statement credit. They'll also give you a general broad 3% or 1.5% on everything or a 5% rotating category offer on everything that you spend. Here you can find yourself earning some benefits on anytime you shop at the grocery store or online retail purchases or even if you're using a gas station. So this just shows how flexible it is. They're trying to capture a lot of beginners just like you. When it comes to the Chase versus Amex dilemma, this was something I made plenty of videos on long before, which is better, Chase or Amex. I would say it doesn't matter which one's better. You can always hold both and they're still very beneficial. Amex is better at certain things. Chase is better at other things. I always have a mix with them. I've been doing this for many, many years now. And what you have to know is with Amex, the point redemptions take more work. It's not as easy to get good redemptions after you're able to accumulate thousands of points with them and you're trying to find that first class flight, you got to do a little bit of research. You got to figure out exactly what flight is leaving what terminal, whether or not you can transfer it over to that partner. So a little bit more stuff, but don't worry about that right now. Let's just talk about the steps on what you should do, the blueprint on even getting started. So keep in mind also with Amex, they have a bit more higher approval rates. While Chase does not like new applicants, Amex was found to have way higher new applicant openings. So Amex is a bit more generous if you have no relationship with them, but keep in mind the Amex network is accepted in much less places. I haven't had that many issues lately, but I remember before the pandemic, not a lot of like Asian restaurants or like hole in the wall places, they would want to accept Amex. It's usually found that Visa is accepted pretty much everywhere. But when you're talking about American Express's network, because they charge a bit of a higher interchange fee to the merchants, you'll find in some smaller businesses, they do not like accepting American Express. So at this part of the slide, 
provide. It's going to be the most optimum plan. And this is actually starting within Chase's ecosystem and something that I would recommend all of you guys to follow. This is exactly pretty much to the T on what I did ideally, um, just minus the discover part, which is not in here. So step one here is to apply for a Chase bank account. If you can't get approved for a credit card, what you can do is apply for a bank account, which is completely for free. They're not gonna be asking for your credit score or for any type of sensitive information. Usually you can just apply, get accepted, have access to that bank account. The reason why you wanna start by doing this about one to two months, even before applying for the card is because it builds that relationship. When building a relationship, for the year 2022 going into 23, it's not about, you know, who you meet in person or, you know, like going out to the clubs or having golf with the executive branch manager. In the new modern day, it's all about having your name in their system. And what you have to do next is show that you have activity where you have income coming in. If you are working a nine to five, Make sure that you get an updated bank account. Make sure they are able to start depositing your biweekly checks or your monthly checks into that account so you have some cash coming in. Then the algorithm that all these traditional banks have will be able to start placing you in these different categories saying, okay, this person is not just a ghost user. They have some income coming in. Oh wait, they're making their median average salary. Oh wait, they're making a little bit more money than the average age of this account uh, for whoever's holding it. If you're able to open an account with them, put some activity on there. If you're self-employed, start putting some money in there, then that's going to increase your chances of getting approved for the first credit card that you're applying for. Then what you want to do next is apply for either the Freedom Flex card or the Freedom Unlimited. I personally find more value in the Freedom Flex because that 5% rotating category, it adds up. It's really good rather than 1.5% back on everything. If you happen to be a spender where you buy just random stuff online, it's better to still get 1.5% back rather than just 1% back as you would on the Freedom Flex. So your miles may vary. That's a term you're going to hear a lot within the credit card space. Y M M B your miles may vary, meaning it just depends on who you are. So once you decide on which credit card you want, apply for that card. Now this section is actually really important because when you apply for a credit card, a lot of people just apply right away. They may Google the card and then you click on like uh, the sponsored link and then you go into it. So before you even apply, make sure you find the right offer. If you know someone who already has this card, reach out to them to see if they can get you a referral link because they're going to be earning a little bit of a kickback. You can help out your buddy. And sometimes that referral link is a lot higher than the public offer that you might see just on Google. On top of that, if you're checking your mail and you get some of those mail in offers, sometimes those are higher too. But another way that you guys can also apply for these cards is by using the links down below in the description. Do the first things I mentioned, find like a family member or a friend who may hold that card first, get the referral bonus to them because it's a win win. As long as the offer that you get is not low than the public offer that you just see on Google, you're good to go. Another key trick is to always make sure that you first apply in incognito. You clear your browser history because sometimes if it's a newer offer that the algorithm or the computer has not recognized, then they may give you an even higher bonus. When it comes to credit card offers, this here is huge. It's this $200 bonus. Sometimes you may see a $250 offer. Sometimes you might see a $300 offer just by doing five seconds of clicking. Make sure you're able to get the highest welcome bonus possible. Throughout the pandemic, we've seen this offer getting adjusted a ton. And even right now, it's spending $500 on purchases in the first three months. Sometimes it's $500 in the first six months, so you have more time. And sometimes they just up the uh, actual bonus offer by a significant amount. For the most part, this is, I think, still one of the best offers to get. They did tack on the gas station purchases on up to $6,000 spend, which is a new thing that they recently had. I think it's because gas prices have been going up so much. They want to incentivize other people to sign up and have a reason to keep this card. Now, say you apply for the Chase Freedom or Freedom Unlimited card and you get it. You then want to make sure you get that welcome bonus, which I think is pretty easy to hit for your average consumer. And after that, you want to wait two to three months and you want to go ahead and look for a mid tier card. So mid tier cards range all over the place. But the reason why I would recommend the Sapphire Preferred is because it's within its ecosystem. If you're climbing up the ranks naturally like this, the algorithm can also catch up on that and can also give you a higher chance of getting approved for that card. If you go from Chase Freedom Flex or Freedom Unlimited, which is a beginner card, all the way into a mid-tier American Express card, which is a completely different credit card company, and say you just have like very little history to, you might actually get denied for the American Express Gold card. So by following an optimized plan, you can thus increase the amount of chances 
at your disposal so you can get approved at the highest likelihood possible. When it comes to the Chase Sapphire Preferred card, you'll find that you can earn 60,000 bonus points. This here is where you make a majority of that money. It's actually not gonna be coming from just earning you know, 2%, 5% back on your purchases. You'll still find that it does add up over time, but a majority of the money that you can make is gonna be coming from these welcome bonuses. Make sure you can get it. Make sure if you do apply, you get approved, you then get the welcome bonus, save those points because that's what you're going to be using in order to unlock that free travel. Also, keep in mind when it comes to mid-tier credit cards, these are ones that are going to have annual fees, meaning that you're going to be paying every year in order to just hold those cards. With beginner cards, you can have as many as you want. You don't have to pay any annual fee. But when it comes to beginner credit cards, keep in mind, you don't need to have a crazy high credit score in order to get approved. But for mid-tier cards and advanced level cards, you're going to want a higher credit score. Now, I've seen people within a 600 credit score range get approved for some of the beginner cards. But when you're talking about you know, the mid tier cards, please make sure you at least have a 700 credit score. A lot of people will say, okay, if I don't have an 850, it's the end of the world. I have sucky credit. It sucks. If you have a credit score of more than 720 to 730, that right there is really the best that you would need in order to get approved for any card. If you have a 720 to 730 credit score, but you somehow find yourself getting declined, they will actually send you a reason in the mail on why you got denied. Most often, if you have a score within that range and you get denied, it's because your credit history length is a little too low. So in that instance, I would go ahead and do the piggyback method, find your mother, your father who may have a good credit score because that will add their history onto your account. Try applying for it just a little bit after that or call the reconsideration line, which we'll go over in this guide, which will then also allow you to get approved. Going back into this, if you get the Sapphire Preferred, just know that you'll pay that annual fee after a year of holding, hit that sign up bonus, then go for the next card. I believe next on this list is gonna be the Amex Gold. And the reason for this is because the Amex Gold and the Chase Sapphire Preferred, they're within that same category. They're both mid-tier range cards, but it does have a bit higher of an annual fee. But you also have to keep in mind with what I said before, Amex does like to accept a lot more newer people into their network. I applied for the Amex Gold without having any history with American Express, and I got approved right away. Back in the day, there was a stigma that if you got an American Express card, you know, it was like crazy and like, you know, like you're a baller instantly. Nowadays, it seems like almost anyone can get approved. Just make sure that you have a good credit score. It is still a flex, I think, having an American Express card compared to slapping a Chase Sapphire card, but your miles may vary depending on where you live. That might be a little bit more subjective. I'm just telling you from my own experience with having a lot of these different credit cards that when you have a gold card, people take you just a little bit more seriously or they'll expect a little bit of a more of a tip or sometimes you get better service just because of the credit card that you have. Now, after the American Express gold card, you're gonna notice these three cards. And you know, if you're new to the game, you may not have recognized these, but these here are the Chase Inc. Trifecta cards. So this is the Chase Inc. Business Cash card, the Chase Inc. Business Unlimited card, and also the Chase Inc. Business Preferred. Now, I made a video on my channel talking about how you can get approved for any business credit card. And I also went over all the benefits and why you would want to consider doing that as well. When it comes to personal credit cards, there is a limit. There's something called the 524 rule with Chase, where you can get only a certain amount of credit cards within 24 months. So that'll cap you out right there. That means you can't apply. But if you go for business credit cards, you start working around these rules. You have access to different cards and believe it or not, almost everyone Everyone can get a business credit card, even if you're not completely a business owner just yet. The reason for this is because even small things like being a delivery driver or your Uber driver, or you know, you've know you mowed someone's lawn before, you got some money for that. A lot of people are indeed business owners, and most of the time they are freelancers, and you don't need to go out and you know sign up for a corporation or an LLC and do all these things. You can be a sole proprietor, and through that, you can find yourself opening up an array of additional benefits. One of the most attractive things about business credit cards is the fact that it does not report to your personal credit report. So if I have all three of these business ink cards, they all have 24 month 0% APR intro bonuses and they have a total combined limit of $100,000. I have a $100,000 credit limit without having to pay any interest on that, without having it to decrease my personal credit score for about 24 months. And it's just money that you can use, you can leverage. If you're going through hard times, that is something that you can access. I have had many business credit cards. I have all three of these. I have the business platinum card. I have the Amazon business prime. I just, I have a bunch of them guys within this binder. And I can tell you without business credit cards, you're limiting yourself. So eventually once you're able to 
work through the optimized plan. You get your freedom cards, you get the chase cards, you get the American Express cards, go into the business cards, expand your collection. And from there, you can actually decide exactly what type of credit card user you are. Do you like staying at home? Do you like traveling? Do you like traveling specifically at Marriott or Hyatt? From there, you can start picking more exclusive credit cards that give you these benefits that you never would have imagined that allow you to get treated a little bit better at some of your favorite places. Now, moving on after the mid-tier cards, which you have a wide variety of, you have the American Express Cash Preferred, you have the World of Hyatt Visa card, the Marriott Bonvoy lineup, which is spectacular too, or even the Amazon Visa Prime card. You then have your God tier cards. These are going to be some of the highest annual fee cards, meaning you got to pay a bit of change. But the reason why people will pay this much money is because they do offer you a positive ROI. Now, I went ahead and made this slide a while back before their revamps. So some of these cards actually look a bit different. And when it comes to the platinum and the business platinum, you see on your screen right here, the annual fees did go up. So they're all up about $100. If it's $550 from this, it's actually $650. The business platinum right now, I believe is $695. Um, the Sapphire Reserve, they also bumped it up just a bit too. These are going to be your travel cards. These are going to be the flex cards. And you also have the Centurion card down here. You also have the JP Morgan uh, Reserve card here. There's a story behind these. I wouldn't worry about it right now. I'm not going to go into full detail, but the first three right here have crazy good benefits. And even the Hilton Honors card right here, or the Hilton Aspire, as most of you guys would know it, this year is really beneficial too. So eventually down the line, once you start getting into the credit card game, you'll notice that you're in the market for applying for one of these cards. They will give you a positive ROI. All right, guys. So here on your screen is just an example of my yearly credit card review that I did on my American Express Business Platinum card. So at that time, it was a $595 annual fee. I went ahead and added up all the little benefits I had. So I had the airline incidental fee. I had purchase protection on getting some, I believe, new AirPods for this. I had a Dell credit, which applied twice on mine. I had all these small business statement credits at that time. I had the wireless phone credit uh, where it was literally just by having a credit card, I was paying for my uh, uh, cellular service. I was having a shipping credit that I ended up using. I had an Amex appreciation credit where they gave me a random $200. Now, at the end of the year, I was able to calculate a total benefit of $559 of just holding that card, not even including the Amex offer savings that I had to date. As long as you're using the credit cards, you understand exactly what benefit it offers you. You can find yourself making money just by holding them. And it's like a business. It's like if you spend $10 on marketing, but you make $30 back, you still have $20 profit. So a lot of people will often see these annual fees and then they don't do the work. They don't do the small things. Like you get a Saks Fifth Avenue credit, um, you get hotel resort suite credits, you get a lot of benefits. But when you find that you're not doing anything with it, then you can find yourself going into the negative. It wouldn't be worth it for you. But if you like doing a little bit of research, if you like playing the coupons a bit, it doesn't take that much work. And I'm telling you, it gets pretty fun. You can find yourself unlocking an array of positive value. Now here, just real quick, it's the business tier credit cards. Outside of the Chase trifecta that I mentioned within the Inc. business lineup, you have the American Express Business Cash, the American Express Blue Business Plus, and the American Express Business Platinum. And keep in mind, the annual fee changed. Just some quick tips that I also want to mention. Uh, when you're applying for a credit card, you happen to be denied for it. Know that there is something called a reconsideration line. This is a huge, huge perk that you have. In Instead of just accepting defeat, like some people may do when you apply for a credit card, they deny you. You can call something called the reconsideration line where you actually talk to an individual person on the other end where they can manually trigger the algorithm. So it does change and it does change it from being declined to approved. If you applied for Chase, you got declined for whatever card. This number here, you guys can take a picture of the screen or screenshot it, are very important numbers to save. So American Express, Chase, Bank of America, Citibank. Or if you guys want to double verify it, just type in on Google. Google reconsideration line with whoever you're trying to contact, whether it's Chase or any other lender. So we pretty much went into detail talking about how you can get started, some of the credit cards that you should look out for. But I also wanted to just cover real quick on unlocking your card's full potential. What's the point of having 20, 30 different credit cards if you don't know how to use it or if you're paying all these annual fees that are adding up every single year, but you forget to maximize the credit. Before we dive into that, the first thing I want to mention is that using the right card is so important. When you 
have a whole bunch. You're not going to be carrying this around the restaurants. I won't judge if you guys are carrying this at a restaurant. This happens to be your wallet. But for the most part, you're probably carrying just about three to five cards. Know which card to use in certain circumstances. If I'm eating out at my favorite Korean barbecue place, I'm going to be using the American Express gold card so I can get 4X back on that instead of using my Chase Freedom Flex, where at that time, maybe it's giving me 5% just on gas and nothing else. Or if I'm at the gas station trying to fill up my tank, I'm not going to be using the gold card where I can be using the Freedom Flex and getting 5% back. Also think of it as a 5% discount or even more if you get a good point redemption. The second and probably one of the most important aspects of the credit card points and miles game in order to make a lot of money back. It's the welcome bonus. I cannot stress this enough. If you apply for a card, do get the welcome bonus. This is so, so important. If you miss out on this, you're pretty much shooting yourself in the foot. If you're unable to hit the welcome bonus, one of the strategies that I recommend you guys to do is if you're paying for rent, you're paying for uh, your car, you can use your credit card. So luckily enough for the apartment complex that I live in now, I can just use my credit card. They charge me a small um, fee for using my credit credit card, but I can use it right on their platform. I rack up the points or if I'm applying for a new credit card, I can put it all on that new one, hit that welcome bonus and see huge amounts of points coming onto my account. But the next thing you could also do is use other services. Plastic was very, very common to use over the past few years. I feel like it's been getting a little less popular now, but just keep in mind that there are still ways that you can get creative with your spending. If you're paying your utilities, things that you're paying every single month anyways, don't overspend in order to hit a welcome bonus but make sure that you're finding creative ways that you can allow yourself to use your credit card. So if you're renting from someone, ask them if, hey, can I use my credit card, charge it up um, and have it on there so I can get the points and I still pay the same amount. Or if you're paying for your car, you know, sometimes they allow you to use your credit card for that as well. Now, using all the benefits and credits associated with the credit card is the next important step. Please understand how your credit card works. If you have the business platinum versus the Amex gold, know that they offer you two different benefits. One of them will even give you credits on Uber, where the other one, you can get $10 a month from Shake Shack, you know, participating restaurants, but people forget that. People forget that you get a free meal every single month by holding a certain credit card, and that is what offsets that annual fee. Please make sure you take advantage of it. If you do all those things, you're pretty much well set. You're gonna be accumulating a lot of points, but the next thing you wanna know is, Brian, how do I redeem these points? How do I get maximum value, and how do I book that dream vacation to the Bora Bora, to the Maldives or, you know, the blue, the ocean's so blue. Guys, I want to go there one day too. I'm going to make it possible. I want to go there one day too, but how do I maximize it? This is going to be three things. So in-house redemption, transfer partners, or you can also cash out your points using Schwab. Let's break down with in-house redemption first. So this is where if I was using Chase points, I could go on Chase's ultimate rewards portal. This is pretty much where you can choose how to use those points. You can go shopping and decide exactly how you want to redeem all the money that you earned. All right, guys. So right now I'm just going to show you step-by-step step within the Chase Ultimate Rewards portal. So as you can see, I've close to a million points across all my credit cards. My Inc. Business Preferred one is the one that has 757,000 points. By going here, I can actually take a look at how I could spend my points. So about 757,000 points are now worth about $9,400. I could get $7,500 worth of gift cards with them. Excuse me. I could also get cash back $7,500 worth of cash back. So literally just by the points I have, if I needed a rainy day fund, or I don't know if I'm trying to put a down deposit on a car right here, I could do that. These portals make it really easy. And that's why I said in the beginning, Chase is very flexible with their points and literally just open up the portal, find where you want to go or say, I want to travel. I'll show you just step by step. We'll do Maldives. I'll put in the Maldives right here. Say I want to go, I don't know, February 1st to the 9th. I search it. It's going to go ahead and find me some hotels. So sometimes it'll even discount the hotels within their portal. And it'll show that about eight nights is $3,000 or about 249,000 points. So I could pay for my points, never pay out of pocket and find myself traveling to the Maldives hotel completely for free. Now I'm going to give you guys a quick little tip right here. This is a really important, just free tip that I'm going to share with you guys, something I personally do for myself. And that is if you're booking travel and you know, you're going to pay cash and you have an American Express card, book it through amextravel.com. I booked a hotel trip to the Ritz Carlton uh, back with my girlfriend. So back then when I booked my room, it was just a regular single room. Okay. Nothing too fancy. It was one of their base rooms, but I showed up 
and I got a full suite upgrade. It was actually the biggest suite that I had ever stayed in on any one of my travels. And the only reason I got that was because I booked it through the Amex travel portal. And for here, you'll notice that you get a room upgrade upon arrival when available. So this is one of the ways that you can increase your chances of getting a room upgrade. You can also find yourself getting free benefits like daily breakfast for two people for free. You get 4 p.m. checkout, which is insane. You get noon check-in, Wi-Fi, spa credits, all these and that. So, you know, you're trying to book a, a place to travel. Say you don't even want to use your points. I'm just going to give you guys like a tip right here. That alone and me just booking through here, paying the same price and getting that suite upgrade. The suite was worth a couple thousand dollars. That right there was like 10 grand in value just for free. So that's my little gift to you guys. Get an Amex card, get one that allows you to use the Amex travel rewards portal and book through here. And you'd find yourself very surprised when you walk into a full suite without asking for an upgrade. Now, something else that's really popular and common that a lot of the more expert level travel hackers use is going to be point transfer systems. Back before the travel craze of after the pandemic settled down, right now everyone's traveling right now, points are getting a little bit more devalued and inflation, yes indeed, is hitting the points and miles sector. Back in the day, we had a lot of transfer partner incentives, meaning if you had your Amex MR points, membership reward points, and you transferred it over into a certain airline of your choice, they would give you a boost. They would boost it up by like another 50%. We're not seeing that happen too often, but this is one of the ways that you could find yourself booking first class business class flights at a significant discount. By transferring your MR points into whatever airline of your choice, within there, those membership reward points becomes the currency for that airline where you can then get a discount on your flight or get it paid completely back in full. Now for this, the website I would use is Award Hacker. Go on this website, it's free. Put in the airport that you're gonna be leaving from, put in the airport that you're trying to go to, and it'll find all the different ways that you can transfer your points in order to find the best flights. Now, another way that people utilize credit cards and you know this kind of end game stuff but you could actually find yourself getting something called the Charles Schwab American Express Platinum card where with this you can get a redemption of 1.25 cents back on your point so for every point instead of getting one to one if you had a million points instead of only getting ten thousand dollars for that you could find yourself getting 1250 you can find yourself getting a rate of 1.25 cents back so if you don't like traveling if you hate traveling for whatever reason you can find yourself cash out all the points that you earned. And for that, you can invest it into the markets, buy some real estate, do whatever you want, or just, you know, treat yourself to a gift too. Or you could just hold on to your points and use it for travel like many people would. All right. So guys, that is pretty much taking you from A to Z as a credit card user. And hopefully by now, if you're watching this all the way to the end, you at least have a better idea on how this all works. Some of the most important rules, the do's, the do nots. Keep in mind that I have a lot of free videos, free knowledge here on YouTube as well. Now, on top of that, I want to take it a step further. I want everything I said in this video to come out in a very cohesive way where it's like step by step, you know exactly what you're going to do in a PDF file as well. So if you guys made it till the end of this video, here's what I need you guys to do. Check out down below in the description of this video, my free email newsletter. In here, I'm going to be sending you an automated email newsletter on exactly what you should be doing about every single month on which credit cards you should be applying for, some little tips, freebies, and things like that. So if you guys are looking for a free PDF, PDF on pretty much what I covered in this video, a blueprint, a roadmap, a reminder. I will give you guys additional free value in that. Just sign up for the email newsletter down below in the description. All right. So to sum this video up, be sure to follow me over on Twitter and on Instagram if you haven't done so already. And be sure to use the links down below in the description if you guys are looking to support this channel. If you're signing up for any credit card at all, whenever you guys do use those links, it does support this so I can keep making free content at no cost to you. Now that, that's pretty much it. If y'all did enjoy it, please let me know down below in the comments. I always do like a secret word too. This one is going to be like, uh, let's do dragonfly. If you guys made it till the end, comment that down below. This is a credit card video that I haven't made in a while. A lot of you guys have been asking for credit card content. We've been doing a lot of crypto stuff and hopefully there's a lot of value in here. It took me a long time to make this and I hope that you guys are able to travel for free. I hope you guys maximize all the benefits that are available to you. And I hope this was able to bring value to someone out here in the world. Now, thank you all so much again for watching and until next time, peace out.